Hello everyone, glad to see you all in this training school. My name is Zili Li, I'm a lecturer or we say tenured assistant professor in geotechnical engineering at University College Cork. Also a member of Irish Center for Applied Geoscience, I correct. Today let me give you a presentation on the topic of principles and applications for monitoring and assessing underground cavity sites. So before I talk about uh, the details of this presentation, first let me introduce myself, who I am. As you can see in this slide, I got my bachelor degree in civil engineering in China and then PhD degree at University of Cambridge in the UK. Then I spent one year in Colorado School of Mines in the US, back to Cambridge as a research associate. Then five years ago, I joined University College Cork in Ireland. My specialized areas include underground space technology, innovative monitoring technology, Internet of Things, big data analytics in geotechnics. So, which means that uh, I say there's uh, I say a, a, a good overlap between my expertise with the theme of this course to action, this training school. Let's look at the content of today's presentation. Uh, I'm going to introduce innovative monitoring and assessment technologies for underground sites. Let's say in the interest of time, I'm going to introduce three main, let's say, emerging uh, um, technologies for underground site monitoring. First is wireless sensor network. Second is distributed fiber optic sensing. And the last one is drone inspection and image-based automatic assessment. For the first two parts, let's say uh, wireless sensor network and distributed fabric sensing, I'm going to introduce it by myself. For the last part, I will ask my PhD student, Miss Yan Zhang, to introduce you in person in this training school. Now, let's talk about wireless sensor network. So here you can, in this slide, you can see that, uh, let's talk about an underground site, an underground tunnel. And uh, we know that, uh, let's say for underground site, it may deform uh, with time uh, or due to adjacent construction uh, and uh, let's say surface buildings, etc. Then how to monitor the, let's say, uh, the structure deformation, the site, let's say displacement, one way to let's say, monitor the let's say, deformation would be that let's deploy some sensors. But uh, the sensor deployment in an underground cave can be challenging because conventionally, if you want to deploy some sensors, you need to have cables, right? So you need to have cables, let's say, uh, connect one to another, and then, let's say, uh, uh, which can be very time consuming and can be very inconvenient for on the ground site. Alternatively, we can make those sensors wireless. So here we can see that, uh, let's say, in Dublin Port Tunnel, it's a tunnel in Ireland, uh, we are working with uh, the asset owner, TII. Uh, transportation infrastructure island. In this tunnel, we deployed some sensors, and then those sensors can communicate with each other, and then let's say this, they will transmit the data to a gateway. Finally, this gateway uh, transmits the data to your desktop in your office. So in this way, we can let's say monitor the tunnel, the underground site deformation in almost real time and in the long term as well. So here you can see this, uh, uh, this is a picture of 
dubbing port tunnel and uh, like many other tunnels in the world and other underground sites, you can see that, uh, let's say, uh, we observed a series of uh, deterioration evidence. So here you can see, let's say, tunnel surface spalling, water leakage, and the crack at the tunnel crown, etc. And in, a, let's say, underground site, in an underground site, uh, those major cracks and, uh, let's say, uh, spalling can be observed from time to time in many, let's say, uh, uh, cases as well. In this regard, and we here you can see this we have usually for a tunnel line we have let's say uh, two tunnels why let's say one for southbound and the other for the northbound and we have a small tunnel in between we call it cross passage then let's say in the in this on the ground network we uh, deployed some sensors here you can see uh, this blue one they represent, let's say, uh, it represents, let's say, a crack meter to measure crack development. And uh, for this one, it, uh, well, it uh, represents tilt meter to monitor the tonal inclination movement. And then the data will be transmitted to gateway. So you can see the, the two red ones, gateway. Right. And then the gateway, the two gateways, they will uh, transmit data uh, while, let's say, uh, 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 while mobile phone network to your desktop, to your office. What we can monitor? Uh, we can monitor water leakage, crack, uh, concrete cracks, uh, concrete erosion, falling, and etc. So here is one case study of WSN monitoring in underground in an underground tunnel. Let's look at the data. And here you can see that, uh, let's say, we deployed the sensor network in April. And so far we have gathered data over for almost half a year. And we can see that, uh, let's say, uh, from the tilt meter, from the inclination meter, we can see the tunnel, uh, let's say, is moving with time, although, uh, let's say, although a bit slowly. But, uh, but uh, what surprised us would be that the observed tunnel deformation rate actually is much greater than that predicted by finite element models, by our computational models. So it means that uh, it means that, uh, as say, the field monitoring data, it matters because our assumption, our numeric, let's say, or computational mod simulation may not be very realistic unless it can be validated, it can be compared against field measurements. Let's move on. Now let's look at another case study, which is one, which is let's say WS and monitoring of an underground, let's say world heritage. It's a dolmen in Portugal. What is dolmen? Uh, it's basically it's a small cave. Here you can see a, a small cave, which was built in ancient, uh, um, thousand years ago. And uh, uh, for, let's say, for, for our, uh, for, for us, for, for engineers, uh, what, what we are concerned about is that uh, there are two main things. One thing is that uh, whether this, let's say, uh, dolmen is structurally stable or not, whether it, let's say, well, whether it's deforming with time or not, uh, and uh, let's say, once, uh, do, if it's deforming with time, do we need to retrofit it? That's, for, that's the first question. The second question is that, uh, let's say, uh, if it's stable, then we will, we will allow 
tourists to visit the dorm, to stay there. Then how many visits, uh, sorry, how many visitors can stay in the dorm at the same time? For how long? Whether, let's say, because those visitors, they will generate uh, carbon dioxide, right? Then whether this CO2, let's say, concentration will lead to any damage to the, let's say, paintings in this domain. So those, so the second question would be that, uh, what would be the impact of visitation of, let's say, those tourists on the paintings on, the, let's say, inside the cave. So in this regard, uh, we have a WSN sensor deployment system. And together with some, let's say, uh, let's say, air quality detectors. So here you can see we have four inclinometers uh, to measure the, uh, the, the uh, cave movement, like slab movement. And we have two crack meters installed on stone slab, slabs A and H, A and H. They can measure whether the crack is developing or not. One laser tilt node uh, to measure the, let's say, the, the, in the, in this, let's say, uh, uh, direction whether there's any movement. And then we have air quality detector um, to monitor the uh, CO2 concentration and uh, humidity, temperature, etc. Finally, we have gateway to gather the sensor readings and uh, again, it transmit, uh, let's say, to our desktop while mobile phone network. So let me show you some data. In the last slide, I mentioned that there are two main questions. Well, the first one is that whether this cave, this domain is structurally stable or not. And uh, here you can see that uh, roughly, here you can see that uh, we got uh, the crack development or displacement development with time from November 2020 to let's say uh, to, to, to January this year and uh, March this year and uh, April. In this graph, we can see that uh, let's say uh, for some pillars, for most actually for most of the pillars, they are stable. The crack development or displacement is small, is negligible with time. But for, for one pillar, pillar A, the critical one here, you can see this is pillar A uh, at the side of the opening, very close to the opening in the entrance of the dolmen. You can see because of a major crack 